But hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most. Avery plays purely all the frickin' time LR32. I feel like that's all I've talked about the last couple days is purely. So this is going to be our last purely video for a while, at least till after the June 10th regional in Boca Raton. So destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button because, ladies and gentlemen, as I said in my community post, we hit 1,200 subscribers, and I am so amazingly grateful. I cannot thank each and every one of you enough, whether you've been subscribed for a week or a month or a year, I truly am grateful to each and every one of you, especially for those of you who have been around for a long time. You know, the, the support that I've been seeing on the channel always amazes me. And, you know, I could sit here and talk for five minutes about how grateful I am, but I don't think that that would really do it any justice. You know, I'm going to show that I'm grateful by continuing to put out great content, or at least try to, and uh, talk about the game that I love that has got me through a lot of rough times in my life and continues to get me through, you know, rough times in my life. That's one of the things I really reminded myself after this crazy balance came through and did 25 changes, ladies and gentlemen, trying to fix purely and raging on stream a little bit yesterday. It was kind of more comical than anything. We built a board and of course we get evenly matched out the ass because that's just how dog water luck I have in this game. Um, but, you know, uh, remind, kind of just bringing myself back to center that, like, look, this game is meant to be fun. Because I'll admit, I've been stressing out over purely. I've spent over $400 on this deck. I spent $80 on the Sprite Core. Yes, we're using a Sprite engine. And uh, it, it's definitely had me stressed out for a little bit, but I think I'm going to be able to recoup some of my money. If I can at least break even, I'll be happy. If I lose, like, 50 bucks, fine. It's whatever. It's better than losing, like, over 500 like I almost did with Cash Tira. I broke even on Cash Tira, and we spent, like, 500 on Cash Tira. So, anyway, without any further ado, this is Sprite for the new format. I, if you watch the stream that I did uh, yesterday, I tend to stream just randomly and sporadically. I don't really have a schedule for it. I showed off a fairy build that I was working with that one of my subscribers, or the very least, some uh, one of the commenters on one of my videos where I said I broke purely, um, which is blown up, by the way. Thank you for all that support. Uh, he emailed me a couple different builds, and I was trying it out. There is the, well, what the fairy build was playing was the Tyrus Hierarchia thing. That's cool, but it just feels so inconsistent if you don't have it in your hand or grave. And I'm not going to play Foolish Burial for one copy of that. And I don't want to play multiple copies because I'd rather be drawing into purely cards or even hand traps. Uh, even though I'm playing like two hand traps in this deck. <laughs> but this is still kind of a work in progress. People were asking for a deck profile, and I at least wanted to put one out. Just know that this is still kind of a work in progress, and I'm kind of debating between a couple of things. But I figured instead of me trying to figure it out on my own, let me show it off to all of you. And, uh, you know, maybe we can come to a consensus on the best way to play it. People try to tell me that this build is inconsistent, and I've, I've fallen in love with it. I think for my play style, it's great. But I could be wrong. I want to see what all y'all think down in the comments below. Anyway, I'm going to shut the hell up now. And uh, we're going to show off our three non-collectors rare purelies. Uh, this is actually Sylveon, uh, that, the fairy type EV. I didn't realize how much it looks like Sylveon until I was going through my Pokemon today. Because now you can put all, a bunch of your old Pokemon from like in home and stuff into Scarlet and Violet for those of y'all who are Pokemon fans. Yeah, it looks like Sylveon. It's adorable. And then, uh, of course, the instead of three copies, now two copies of Lily. This one's, of course, Umbreon. Um, we bumped this down to two because... Honestly, the Purely is just a sub-engine, and we're kind of, at least from what people have told me, we're playing a worse version of Sprite. <laughs> so we're playing two copies of Super Saiyan Blue. If you remember when we freaked out when we did our Power of the Elements case opening, I was like, it's not red, it's not green, it's blue. We pulled three blues out of case. That was disgusting. Uh, one Jet and one Red. Uh, we are not playing Carrot. We're not playing Carrot because uh, we're also playing this stuff here. Uh, we're playing three copies of the beaver with the two anglers. We're not playing carrot because this is a 40 card main deck. And from what I watched at the Ireland National Top 8 build, which is where this build comes from, um, he wanted high impact cards. And whenever you're trying to special summon your sprites or, you know, whether it's off gigantic or, you know, what have you, if you happen to open them up or open with them, um, yes, you're not insulated from spells and traps with carrot, but yet you don't. You don't really rely on your level twos as much as you would in like a normal sprite deck. Like, don't get me wrong, the end board in this deck is gonna look weird because it's literally just monster negates. You don't have any spell or trap negates. 
but you're not really concerned about that when like your end goal is basically to have a noir and to have theory on uh, double cross or sprite double cross whatever the fuck it is uh, and purely leap in the back row. We're going to be showing off combos at the end of the video. Uh, and then, of course, you use this engine because it's a disgusting engine. You use Sprint to dump the Angler, get you to Beavers, and, you know, build a dam and put Beaver Warrior on uh, Social Security and Welfare. That's what we were saying in the stream last night. <laughs> uh, next up here, we're playing our only two-hand traps. <laughs> this is so garbage at two. Like, I want to take this out for something else because the original build from Ireland side decked a third, and I don't like that concept in the side. Now, it technically should be five-hand traps because these should be nibs, um, but we're playing Kurakaras. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm not going to bullshit you. you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. I spent $135 on my place at a Divine Kurakarats. Uh, they were like 30 to 40, 45 a piece, whatever it was on eBay, whatever that math works out to. So I feel obligated to play this. That's number one. But then number two, like so many decks play around Nib. Like I was playtesting on EDO Pro earlier today against Cash Tira and he summoned four times and I'm sitting on a Droll and a Nib in hand. And if he had just gone for the fifth summon, I couldn't have bearded him to hell and back and we would have won the ball game. So it's like if people are going to be playing around Nib, I feel like Kurakara is just going to be better because like you can just bait out the negates you have the gas with sprite and purely combine to to like out negates and bait them out and then you just drop out a kurakara and you ask them you ask the guy if he's gonna finish his pizza like real talk so i'm, I'm not even bullshitting you that that's that's my reasoning behind it i'm thinking though nibiru may come back in because now with the super heavy samurai scarecrow link being banned um now super heavy is more a times than not going to be going into that fifth summon without having some kind of negate on board and of course they can't play any spells or traps and like they're not going to play cross out so let me know what y'all think about this in the comments i would love to know other people's thoughts on that i'm really back and forth on that in the beer right now uh for the spells we're playing three copies of happy memory uh we're not playing happiness i want to fit happiness into this deck so damn bad uh we'll we'll talk about that in a minute as well uh three my friend it's my friend it's good uh, three copies of pretty because you know we got to be adorable uh, three copies of sleepy you clearly don't care about the draw in this deck as much as you do in pure builds because we're not playing as many hand traps one copy of this card that should be at fucking three this this i feel like just this just killed the deck like i know pack was talking about he was playing a going second build at philly but pack don't show off his side deck so we just gonna uh ignore that <laughs> we're playing one copy of call by the roof um, i know i'm being an asshole but i'm just screwing around I, i'm just busting pack's balls um, two copies of Talents. This replaces the uh, Delicious Memories that would have been in here. The Ireland National player was not main decking Talents. He wasn't even side decking it. I feel like Talents is so good. Like, you have to play this in purely uh, in a first or second build. If you're going to play a going second build, I feel like you should just play the Virginia Regional build that was 45 cards, playing one Talents and two Thrust. Um, but that's besides the point. Um, we're also playing the three Dark Ruler. These could also be uh, Hand Traps along with the uh, leap and the double cross but the thing is with dark ruler it doubles up as discard fodder for your purely spells so like if you hard make plump with two level twos then you can grab this from the grave whereas if this is a hand trap you can't grab it um it also helps you're going second game because you can just lock out boards which is why i'm i don't think i should be playing kurakara because you're already playing dark ruler so they're not going to be activating effects anyway um and then like i said you're, these are your two main traps that you want to end on uh because it's it's how you make noir and give your purely quick effects for the extra deck we're playing two copies of plump um two's fine in this deck you really don't need any more than that two beauty i was thinking about cutting one to throw in happiness but then you're only playing one and that just feels really really rough uh and then we're playing two noir because it's a god card uh, one Gigantic, because that's honestly all you really need. One to Gym Buster, because it's good. I'm thinking about cutting Mannequin Cap for the Happiness, because I feel like Happiness can OTK better than Mannequin Cap. Plus, D-Shifter doesn't shit on this deck as bad as, like, a pure build. Same goes for Droll. Like, we can actually kind of play through Droll a little bit. Um, but I, I feel like Mannequin Cap isn't the answer here. I feel like I should be swapping this out for uh, at Purely Happiness. Uh, and then, of course, the one Downard, the double Zeus, and then we're playing the uh, one Sprint, the one Masquerade, and then Apollosa, but this is going to be uh, Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, because that's just better. Like, you can make your end board have a Masquerina, and then be able to have the Underworld Goddess on standby and just break apart boards. If they're not playing Sphere Mill, which they're not going to be, at worst, you got to worry about a Kaiju or a Lava Golem, maybe Lava. Um, this can just sit on the board, and then, you know, it's something that they have to deal with. And then for the side, because as I've said before, um, 
again, busting packs balls. I'm always going to show off a side or at least talk about things that you can side. Um, it's basically just a copy of my side deck from my uh, 5.0 build that I showed off the other day, um, or at least the concept that I'm working with. Uh, three Vanity Spin, uh, three Santa Claus. Uh, we spent like, what, $80 on this? Um, two Lightning Storm, because it's only one. I prefer this over Cosmic. I know the Ireland player was playing uh, Cosmic. I prefer Lightning Storm, because I feel like I just, I want to be able to have that ability to crack boards and have options. Um, also, real quick, this says you can only activate. If they negate this activation, you can play another one. So, like, with the the Dang Long and getting the first of the Yang, Yang, the Yang Zing Counter Trap that Sword Soul's probably playing now, um, this is nice if they negate the activation, because then you just activate another one. And then one Feather Duster, because it's really good. This deck actually has a really hard time against Labyrinth, believe it or not. I don't know why, because uh, I feel like Labyrinth isn't a very good deck. Three copies of Evenly Match. I feel like this is going to come back into the format. Evenly is just so disgusting. And then three copies of Summon Limit, because this... This actually shuts down Melfi Sprite hard. If you saw my previous deck profile where I talked about uh, my uh, rounds uh, at Locals, and I talked about how I flipped over Summon Limit and all he had was two blues up, and he just couldn't play the game. And it, it was really, really helpful in that regard. I, I really think I'm going to stick with Summon Limit for this format. I really like it over Deep Barrier, because especially, too, like, you know, in a mirror match, or if, like, you know, you go against, like, some Xyz-based deck like Sprite or Trap Trick, you, in theory, can't use um, D-Barrier because it turns off your own Xyz. So it's like, well, damn, now, now like, what are you going to play? You're going to rely on Vanity Sphine and then they imprim you and you cry? So at least with this, like, if you go against the Mirror Match, you know, they summon out a purely use the effect to, like, get a quick play and summon out a monster. Then you flip over the Summon Limit. Now they've had their two summons. And, like, if it's pretty memory, like, okay, they can attach it. But, I mean, at that point, you probably have a new war, and you're probably winning the ball game anyway. Um, so, that is uh, the main side and extra. Let me go ahead and shuffle this up, and we'll show you a combo. So, let's say that you open up with a hand like this. This is actually a good example of what a typical opening hand would look like. If you open up, like, any sort of purely quick play that doesn't require cards on the field, plus Nimble Angler, like... You're, you're really in the driver's seat, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and show off what this can do. We're going to go and activate our purely sleeping memory. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to flip around the cards here so that I can actually see what the heck I'm doing. Uh, we're going to ditch the Nimble Angler. Hopefully you can see that okay. Uh, and then we're going to use this to go for uh, basically whatever purely you don't already have in hand. Um, since we didn't open up a purely, you can really go for whatever. In this case, you have call by and talent, so we're really not giving a crap about any kind of hand traps. Um, but for this example's case, we're going to go ahead and go for Lily. You can also chain block here too with the Angler, which is disgusting. Um, because now you don't really have to care as much about hand traps. They have to have like an Imperm or Veiler or something. And if you open up Call by them, they're not going to be able to Veiler you anyway. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go Lily, chain link one, Angler, chain link two. Just to guarantee that you get the search. Um, so we're going to get out the two Beavers. We're going to build that dam. And then uh, Lily's going to go ahead and go for Leap. Remember that in this deck, you don't necessarily need the quick plays from my friend because you can always just hard make a purely exceed uh, off of your level twos because they are rank two monsters that require two level twos. Um, so for this example's case, I'm actually going to go ahead and leave one beaver up. I'm actually going to link off with the Lily and the beaver. Again, these uh, combos can be very malleable, all depending if you get hand trapped or not. Uh, we're going to go ahead and summon out the Sprite Sprint and activate Sprint's effect. I know that that's kind of hard to see. My camera sucks. I don't have uh, an expert-esque setup. But we're going to use the effect of Sprite Sprint to go ahead and dump the second Angler. Angler's effect is going to trigger again. We're going to get the last Beaver out of our deck. Uh, and yes, that is uh, five summons. So if they have the Nib, they have the Nib. You could play around... Uh, Nibiru, if you instead went overlay the two beavers into Gigantic, um, it still gets you there, uh, which honestly, that's actually probably the more proper play that you should be doing. Uh, but I'm showing this off just to show you what it is that the deck is capable of. Um, but always be playing around Nibiru to the best of your ability. Depends on how you open as well. I mean, if I kind of opened up like ass, then like you can go sprint to dump angler to get your engine going to go into the two beavers. Beavers for Gigantic, Gigantic Detach. And then, you know, go for blue to go into jet to get you to double cross. Because once you get to leap and double cross, you win. Like, those are the only two cards you care about getting to your field. Because then that's where, like, things really take off. So, we're just showing all this off for examples case. We're, we're not really going to be concerned about Nibiru. Just keep all that in mind when you play this. You know, you play this like a sprite deck with purely cards on the side. Or vice versa. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate Gigantic Sprite's effect. To detach. In order to summon out 
are sprite blue. One of the more pretty looking secret rares I might add. Uh, Blue's effect is gonna go ahead to activate. We didn't open up any sort of sprite cards. Um, usually I just go for jet. If we don't already have like jet in hand, um, you can go for red if you already have jet in hand or if you already have double cross in hand, you can go for red to have another monster negate. Um, so we are instead going to go ahead and drop out the jet here and activate jet's effect uh, in order to go for our sprite double cross now double cross is disgusting in this deck because of the fact that it says target a monster on either field or in the grave and apply one of the following effects typically you'll use its effect to target a level one purely in your grave and attach it to a purely exceed that you made with two level twos therefore it now gains its quick effect because it has it as a material if i can get all of this to fit uh in view here uh, there we go. And so now we've got our two level twos established. We're going to set the double cross and the purely leap um, because we, we don't even need a level one on the field, which is really funny in and of itself. We can go a couple different routes here. We can make the gin buster. Um, but really what I'm going to do here, just based on the kind of board that we have, this is at its most basic value. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go for the at purely plump. And then we're going to activate plump's effect to go ahead and attach the sleepy memory. If the opponent has like imperm or something in their grave, remember that you can attach from their grave as well. Uh, so now you have the sleepy memory, you've got three materials. If for whatever reason you didn't use call by, you can of course set call by. And then of course you've got the droll in hand as well. Um, and yeah, this would be like the most basic end board that you have. You have the special summon bounce back to hand with the sprint. Um, other plays that you could have done, like if you open up like purelys or something that you can at least normal summon out of your hand, um, then you can, you know, of course use like purely the regular purely to excavate the top three, you know, possibly make a Dejin buster and have like another monster negate. Like the, the typical board that I end on whenever I'm like just popping off is like you can have Dejin buster with you know, possibly a beauty and a plump on the field. It just all depends on how you open. But at its most basic value, this is uh, what you're going to be ending on. So you have all this. You're going to pass turn. Uh, you're going to go standby phase off of the uh, sleepy member to draw off of plump. Because of the fact that you're playing, if you play Nibiru, at most five hand traps, I don't really care to go for uh, the Noir to draw again because you want to have the five materials on this. So typically, depending on the matchup, like if it's game one, I'm probably going to wait to use the double cross and wait for my opponent to play and figure out what I want to do from there. But usually what you're going to do is activate the double cross at some point on the opponent's turn. Use the effect to target the plump and attach the lily from the graveyard. This now gives your plump its quick effect ability because it has a level one purely as a material. More importantly, once you activate the leap and target the plump, your noir now has exactly five materials and has and it becomes a quick effect bounce because it has the level one purely as a material. So you activate that. You usually want to wait so that you can use plump to attach two materials. Worst case though, if you activate the double cross and attach the lily to the plump and then let that resolve before you play the leap, then you can use the plump's effect to attach the double cross because the chain resolved and now it's in the grave. So if you do that, then you end on a noir looking fat and healthy with three, four, five, six materials. So you've got three bounces on the noir and it's unaffected by activated effects. And in this case, you also have a special summon trigger uh, bounce by detaching from the gigantic and you drew one so you're ending on in theory a four card hand so that's the basic concept with this deck is it you know super spicy and like tier zero broken no i mean like i said the most that you can end on is like monster effect negators so like one time i didn't open up purely leap i couldn't get to the noir my opponent raigeki me and i lost so this is what i mean like it's still a work in progress but the concept is here there's definitely something here and at the end of the day this is what we're going to roll on into at boca raton in florida and you know hope for the best because at this point like like i said i've just gotten so frustrated trying to make this shit work and i feel like that this is really the best way to play it yeah you can play dark worlds i've fucked around with dark worlds but i feel like that's just so inconsistent and with my terrible dog water luck in this game I, I need all the cheese i can get ladies and gentlemen so guys let me know what you think down in the comments below let me know how we can make this better thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video